Pac-Man's always been one of my favorite games, so when I saw this TV games plug-and-play Pac-Man joystick at a thrift store for five dollars. I definitely had to get it. Now this particular unit is from 2003, so it's nearly a decade old, and I think it's one of the earliest TV games joysticks to come out. And like the Magnavox Odyssey and some of the early Pong systems of the 70s and early 80s, this one uses six AA batteries. It uses its own batteries. There's no power cord, and there's no option to plug in a power cord. And that may seem like an annoyance at first, but consider that this is what you're going to be holding while you play so you don't want to have the AV cable and the power cord draped across your room it also makes it very portable so if you want to take it into a different room like if someone wants to watch TV or if you want to take it to a friend's house it's very easy to do because you just plug it into the front of your TV and you're ready to go you don't have to worry about finding a power outlet you actually you need a star head screwdriver to take off the battery cover it takes six double A's and I guess they did that so little kids don't eat the batteries or something and they get sued now the output is only in mono, which for a small TV like what I play this on, it's not really a big, it's, you know, you're not missing anything. But if you're playing it on a surround sound system, you might only hear the sound out of half of the room, which might be a tiny bit annoying. So I'm going to set this up, which takes only a second to do, and I'm going to show you some of the games on here. This joystick has Pac-Man, Galaxian, Rally X, Dig Dug, and Bosconian, which I never even heard of before this. I'll show you Pac-Man first. It's pretty hard to mess up a home version of Pac-Man unless you're Atari, and this version is pretty alright. Amazing graphics are full size, and the graphics aren't squished up like the NES version. When you clear all the dots from the maze, the next stage sets up automatically. This is a decent enough version of Pac-Man, but the ghost behaviors aren't like the original arcade machine at all. For example, in the strawberry level, my pattern always revolves around coming down the bottom corridor from the left as Inky comes down from the right. I can fake him out and make him crawl up towards the power pellet so I can eat him. Alright, so here I go to the left, clearing out the bottom corridor, and there goes Inky coming in from the right. But instead of turning back, he starts chasing me. Now my whole pattern's thrown off. So any strategy used on the arcade machine is pretty much not guaranteed to work in the Jack's joystick version. The AI programming makes this version of Pac-Man essentially worthless to the hardcore player, but at least the cartoon cutscenes between certain levels are still intact. In the arcade version, there's a corner where you could park Pac-Man and hide him there forever. It's almost as good as a pause feature. Why they bothered to reprogram the games just for this one unit and not include a pause feature is beyond me. Next up is Galaxian. This game's pretty much Space Invaders without the bases and without the freaky music in the background and the fighters constantly make kamikaze dives at you while shooting. It can get pretty intense, but compared to Galaga, this really just isn't that interesting to me. Next up, I'll show you Rally X. I heard about this game lots of times over the years, but I never bothered doing any research. But obviously, it's gotta be a racing game, with a name like Rally X. Obviously, I'm trying to get to the checkpoints. The map of the checkpoints on them is superimposed over the screen. It makes it kind of hard to see. Oh, he's gaining! Ooh, a crash! Alright, try that again. They're hitting me on purpose! What kind of race is this? The red cars are suicidal! This isn't a racing game, it's a maze game like Pac-Man and Berserk. Even the music's taken straight from Pac-Man. Listen.
it also makes you wonder why the red cars want to suicide bomb you. At least in Pac-Man, the enemies are actually monsters. But here, it's like some kind of motorsports event from hell. The motorsports theme could have been replaced by just about anything, but cars are pretty easy to animate, so it works well enough. This game is really, really, really fun and addictive. And it's really challenging, too. It's tough even just to get to the first bonus stage. Now, this is actually, I think, the first game to even have a bonus stage. Hitting the restart button is no different from just switching the system on and off. You see a quick three-second copyright screen, and then you're right back in the menu. Next, I'll show you Dig Dug. I always knew about Dig Dug, but this is the first version I ever owned, and actually the first I ever played, though I was very familiar with it already. The sound in this version is all wrong. The notes of the melody all blend together into one long, obnoxious beat. Even having never played Dig Dug before, I knew that this sound was not supposed to sound anything like this. I really can't even play this version because the sound is so bad. The last game on this joystick is Bosconian, which I not only have not played before, but never even heard of before I bought this unit. This is a free roaming space shooter where whenever you hit the fire button, your ship fires in both directions simultaneously. This makes for a really cool chase scenes where you'll be chasing something that's up from behind you while you'll be firing at a target. Your main objective is to take out the green space stations. You can shoot out one cannon at a time, or you can line yourself up and shoot out the glowing core in the middle to blow it up with one hit. Anything you see on screen will kill you if you run into it, and you can also shoot any boulder or mine you see for points. Occasionally, there'll be a little fleet, like an attack fleet of ships from the green space stations, and those will chase you for a second, but they'll actually chicken out pretty quick. This game is really hectic because you'll be shooting in forward and back, and there's bullets flying everywhere. There's friendly fire in this game. The enemies quite regularly shoot each other out, and the bullets travel a really far. They travel very far away from where they where they're shot from, and you could get hit by a bullet from an enemy that's not even on screen anymore. It happens very easily. Now, when you move off the end of the map you'll actually reappear on the other side, so you'll basically scroll through a repeating level endlessly. The way the level... your map is superimposed over the playfield, and against the stars, that can be really hard to make out. Rally X has the same problem, the way the map is superimposed over the... over the playfield. You can even do suicide attacks against the space stations. That's just messed up. So when I did some research on it online, I found out that the original arcade cabinet actually had synthesized voice samples, just like Berserk did. There's no reason for Basconia not to have the speech in it. I mean, it may have been gimmicky, but it adds a lot to the experience of the game. Knowing it was taken out really ruins my ability to enjoy this version, even though it really isn't that bad. But what really ruins it is that none of these games have a save feature. That's absolutely unacceptable. It's not like this is, you know, a Super Mario Brothers game or something where there's an actual end to the game that you can complete the adventure. The only point of these games, the only measure of progress and objective is to score points. So what's the point of even having an on-screen high score feature if when you turn the system off or even reset it, you're right back, you're, it zeroes out and you could... Who wants to take score with, you know, a pen and paper, or taking pictures of your screen like you used to have to do in the game magazines? If you're going to have classic arcade games on a joystick, you absolutely need to have a save feature. This is a huge oversight. It nearly makes the whole thing useless. So, that aside, the games, even though the behavior isn't perfect, they are very fun home versions of, of the original arcade games. You know, these have been out for a while, so they're really cheap now. So, it's a good buy for five bucks or ten bucks, whatever you can get it for. But for, you know, for twenty, you can get the newest model. And the very next day after I bought this, I did buy the newest model, and I'm going to review that next. <laughs> After I 
bought the original Pac-Man joystick from a thrift store for five bucks. I happened to see the newest model in a Target the very next day. So I actually called the company on the phone and said, I have your, your the uh, arcade joystick featuring Pac-Man in my hands right now. And if you could promise me that this will save my high scores, I'm going to buy it right now. And so she very quickly did the research and told me, yes, this does save your, your high score, which the first one didn't. So I bought it right there in Target. I actually, it was 20 bucks. I got it for 15 because it was on sale. Really nice packaging with the uh, Pac-Man backing. The packaging is really over excessive. I had to, it's fastened in like for dear life. This and but the unit itself, very very nice looking unit. It's styled like an like an arcade cabinet. It even has a little edge here. The the reset button. It looks like a coin return return button, and it glows while the system's on. The buttons are exactly like an, like you'd find on an arcade cabinet. They're not like the buttons on the NES Advantage that squeak and don't have a nice travel to them. These have a nice clicky travel to them, as does the joystick. It's a four-way directional joystick. It feels like it's four-way, but it's really eight-way. But the diag the only game that uses the diagonals, I think, is Bosconian. And the diagonals are so precise to move them on that you, you never, you're never going to use them anyway because it takes more effort to move diagonally than it is just to move up and left or however you want to get around. The joystick also twists left and right like a knob. It, it centers itself like an analog joystick on, you know, Xbox 360 controller or whatever. And that steering, that's your steering for pole position. The biggest disappointment about the arcade joystick is that the AV cable is even shorter than the one on the original one from 2003. That's ridiculous. The, the record on the first one barely reached far enough for me to sit right here, which is where I play games from. The cord on the new one is 30 inches shorter. This is 30 inches. That, that's ridiculous. Problems don't stop with the hardware either. Unlike the first one, which only had a three-second copyright screen at the beginning, this one has five different copyright and title screens that take nearly 30 seconds to sit through before you can get to the main menu. Luckily, though, that's the last bad thing I have to say about this joystick. Everything else about it is a huge improvement over the original model. So let's take a look. The arcade joystick comes with 12 games and the main menu is really nice to look at. It's very stylish and makes you feel like you're in an arcade. The sound output on this stick has a certain quality that makes it sound like it's really coming from the original arcade cabinet. Just compare the two versions of Pac-Man. As you can tell, the second version, which is in the new arcade joystick, is sounds way, way better. The AI is more faithful to the original cabinet, too. I'm not good enough to say that the AI is just like the original, but I know that my, the trick I always use on the strawberry level works this time. So I come down the bottom corridor from the left, and there comes Inky, and I move back and forth a bit, and he turns back. That's what he's supposed to do. The intermission music sounds better in this version of the joystick, too. The improvement in sound quality makes Galaxian a totally different game. Just listen. None of these sound effects from the version on the original joystick. The improvement in sound quality in this unit alone totally changes my opinion of Galaxian. The arcade joystick's version of Bosconian sounds and plays so much better that the one on the old stick just seems like garbage. this version talk, but the graphics are way better, the sound effects are better, everything's totally different. It's like a completely different game, and the old one wasn't bad itself. You could tell that this one is way more closer to how the original arcade machine must have played, and I've never even seen the thing before. Alive, alive. This time the radar isn't superimposed over the screen, it has its own little box where everything's nice and easy to see. I played this game for over an hour before I realized that you could actually move on the diagonals. 
the joystick is eight way, but it only clicks into four. I wouldn't have even known that you could move in like all eight directions if I hadn't seen it during the demonstration before you start the game. It's so hard to do, you're better off just moving straight. Once all the green space stations have been destroyed, the next wave sets up automatically. Rally-X has been replaced by new Rally-X. What's new about it? Well, for one thing, the music's slightly different. The radar display is dedicated this time, the colors in the maze are slightly different, and the bonus level theme is remixed. The red cars are still suicidal though. Seriously, who's driving these cars? The blockheads from Gumby? The cars have this weird magnetism to them where they'll just turn on a dime and smash right into you. It's not like in Pac-Man where the ghosts turn away sometimes, you'll, uh, they'll have certain patterns where they're moving around and they'll chase you for a bit. These are dead set on following you around every corner. And unlike in Pac-Man where you could turn corners to get away from the ghosts, turning corners in New Rally X, that just helps them gain on you. I don't even need to explain Galaga. Unlike the other games, this one's letterbox vertically like it's playing on a real cabinet. Having played this in a real arcade many times, as far as I can tell, this game is perfect. At Dave and Buster's, I lean in with all my weight against the cabinet and jam on the fire button. On this little thing, I just can't do it. After the last fighter's destroyed, the next board sets up automatically. Pack and Pal is an obscure Pac-Man sequel that was only released in arcades in Japan. Instead of munching dots, you flip over cards that unlock prizes behind doors. There's a green ghost that doesn't hurt you. That one actually carries the prizes around and makes it hard for you to get to them. She drops the prizes in the ghost's house, and when that happens, you don't get any points for them. But it does help you clear the stage quicker, so I guess that's how it's supposed to help. I like that this game has actual music instead of just beeping. And the green ghost character is interesting, but it really makes the game a lot more complicated and hectic than it needs to be. This game would have been a lot better without the extra ghost character, unless there was a second player helping you, but this game only has a single player mode anyway. The power-ups let you stun the ghosts with a beam instead of eating them. And instead of cutscenes, you get this fun bonus level. Super Pac-Man also has you unlocking doors, this time by collecting keys. You can transform into Super Pac-Man and smash through the gates without needing a key. As Super Pac-Man, you could also pass through the ghosts without being harmed. There's a slot machine bonus in the middle of the maze, and this game has both cutscenes and bonus levels. Dig Dug looks, sounds, and plays way better. Just listen. Once Dig Dug destroys the final enemy on screen, the next board begins automatically. This is my first time playing Mappy, and I really don't care much for it. I dig the title screen, though. Meowkey is naughty, folks. Sounds Englishy. Pac-Man Plus is basically normal Pac-Man with weird stuff thrown in to keep you on your toes. It's also a lot faster and harder. This joystick also has pole position and Xevious. I don't have time to cover them, but they both play great. Though I'd rather have had Miss Pac-Man, Pac-Man Jr., and the arcade platformer Pac-Land, which I was lucky enough to actually play the original version of at a skating rink in the 90s. The final complaint is that the Pac-Man arcade joystick doesn't have grips on the bottom, even though the old joystick did. I actually had to go to the hardware store and buy a pack of grips that I put on myself in order to play it on a smooth surface. This game also has a pause feature. You could pause your game at any time and even change games through the pause menu. In closing, the Pac-Man arcade joystick here is a huge improvement over the original Pac-Man stick. The design is better, it looks great, the buttons are better, the joystick is better, it has lots more games, and the games are all way more faithful to the original arcade versions than the original Pac-Man stick. So, if you see this in Target and you like arcade games, pick it up, even if the cord's too short, or if you have to put your own grips on the bottom, it's still a great buy, and I'd recommend this to any gamer. So, thank you very much for watching. And if you're watching this on a playlist, the next video will set up automatically.